Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, former owner of Illustrious Hardwoods and a boutique store in Mesa, Arizona. Joining me this week is Justin Shaw of Driven for Growth, and we're going to get into a discussion of coaching versus cheerleading. And there's there's a lot of disdain for business coaches out there, and I, I don't blame people one bit because it is... It's a tough space. They get a bad rap. There's a lot of people that are claiming to be coaches, and and really, they truly are just cheerleaders. They will get on the phone with you. They'll pump you up emotionally. They're going to make you feel great. But at the end of the day, they're not providing you with any tools for you to move forward. They're not helping you overcome the challenges that you're actually facing. They're just allowing you to vent and get out what what they're doing. Um, and so it's it's pumping you up. And then it's lackluster. And the other the other side of this is maybe someone is truly talented, but a lot of the times somebody comes in and they they say, Hey, I'm gonna hire this coach. They got all these tools, they're gonna they're gonna help me. And the coach gives you all the tools, but then you don't do the work on your side. And you're not actively going and putting the tools that they're giving you in place. You're not changing your business, you're not spending the time after the coaching sessions to go make the changes that need to be changed. And then you say, this doesn't work. It's not that it didn't work. You didn't do the work. And so there's a, there's a good balance. And we were going to get into talking about how to vet people, uh, to make sure that they can provide you with what you're actually looking for in your business, but also what you need to bring to the table and and how to make that all work. Like I, I get it. I know what it's like to be run ragged and, and, beat down and working 10, 12 hour days and still having to come home and, and do other stuff. And you got the family and it's all, all of that on top of it. It's, it's very hard to manage, especially when you feel like the business is on fire around you. Uh, so that's what we're doing this week. We'll have Justin introduce himself in just a minute. We are here with Floor Academy podcast every week with discussions, just like I mentioned, so that you can figure out ways to improve the business side of your business. I know you're all amazing artisans out there. You understand the technical side. Let's get behind the desk. Let's push some papers around. Let's figure out our numbers. Let's come up with ways to free up our time and be more efficient so that we can get out there and get back to enjoying what we do and owning a business instead of owning a job that just produces an income and isn't leaving us with much else, right? Let's get our free time back. That's why we got into this anyways on our own. Um, Speaking of which, why don't we, let's see, go to Floor Academy pod slash mastermind, check out the mastermind groups. We can do that over there. Uh, We put five individuals into a meeting every other week and we talk about your goals, what you want to do. You get feedback from myself and the other members about things you can implement into your business, the work you need to go do for the next two weeks before we meet again so that you can get the results you're looking for. And you're not having to do it alone. You're getting advice from business owners like you in the same struggles and what they're doing to make their lives easier. Uh, so along with that, uh, anyone that's been subscribing on YouTube, thank you. We are up to 321. So that's almost a third of the way to a thousand. So keep on going over there, subscribing. The views are up, the, the minutes watched are up. So I appreciate that. It actually correlates a little bit to less listens on the traditional podcasting services. So apparently some people prefer seeing the funny faces that happen during the videos and, <laughs> and, and whatnot. And I, you know, hey, however you want to view it, you let me know. And then uh, I got some feedback on Spotify a minute ago. So if you were Steve and you answered the Q&A of what you thought about an episode and said, hey, send me that spreadsheet that you were talking about with with Ken Ballen. I can't reply to you on Spotify, so I can't send you the spreadsheet. You're going to have to reach out through Facebook or email uh, floracademypodcast at gmail.com. I will get it to you. I just can't get it to you through Spotify. Don't hate me, okay? You've got to, I hope you're listening to this episode. It's out there forever now, and I will I will get it to you if you email me. I promise. 
Before we, we have Justin introduce himself, I got a quick ad from Cronus Flooring Business Manager. If your flooring business is giving you headaches, Cronus is the remedy you need. Cronus Flooring Business Manager is an easy to use and affordable solution that simplifies and streamlines your business operations, managing everything from leads and inventory to scheduling installations all in one user-friendly platform. What sets Cronus apart is its comprehensive suite of features, ease of navigation, and full integration with QuickBooks. Don't let your business be a headache. Cronus, no, choose Cronus for a smoother, headache-free business management experience. Visit cronusoft.com slash academy today to schedule a demo. That is K-R-O-N-U-S-S-O-F-T dot com slash academy. Cronus, fast relief for your flooring business headaches. And if you're listening to this live or you catch it in the next day or two, we're going to be doing a demo on Zoom with the Cronus team of their software June 12th at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, if you are listening to this live or if you're listening to this when it comes out podcast proper, you missed it. I'm sorry, but we will do another one in the third quarter. We'll get that scheduled up and put it out on the Floor Academy group. If you're not paying attention and you want to know more of what's happening with Floor Academy, hop into that Floor Academy group on Facebook and we're having discussions over there and asking questions and just really making it happen business wise. Okay. I'm sorry. That's enough out of me. Justin, who are you? What do you do? And why do you do it? Awesome. No, and you do it so well. Great intros all across the board and uh, shouting out the sponsors. So um, maybe I should ask you, how far back should I go? Because um, Driven for Growth as an entity is relatively new. It's mm -hmm. quite a journey to get there. And I think the context that I share might might be helpful. But uh, I'm not sure how you guys usually handle that. that. Sum it up, buddy. Where 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 do we start? How do we get to where we are? Right. Give me the not the elevator pitch, but the okay. slightly extended elevator pitch. Give me a couple minutes. All right. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so yeah, basically, um, it's good to provide some context because I think the theme of our conversation today is I didn't I didn't become a coach overnight. It's not even where I plan to go. It's what I recognized is how I can best deliver results and serve mm -hmm. um, is the right sort of container to fit into and label. But entering the surface industry for starting on the supplier side in 2017, and then very quickly moving into stone, which like countertops, just to, to make that clear, um, bleeds into so many of the other surface industries, yeah. tile, flooring, millwork, et cetera. So getting exposure to that pretty early on in the game um, but my background is that since uh, we're going back almost a decade, owned and operated a growth marketing agency, sales improvement agency. Um, prior to that, I was at the director level, regional director of operations and business development um, okay. for multi-location companies. Um, and so that always bled into, although we were a growth marketing agency and sales improvement agency, there was a consulting element on the side for many of our clients never charged for it, never really had a, a scope for that. It mm -hmm. just kind of naturally, you know, um, ended up being bolted on. It was like, okay, well, in order to remove that constraint so we can get this result, let me work with you guys. Let's jump on a call. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, and so over time, it started to formalize. There was um, business owners that were asking, hey, we don't have any formal experience in this. We have don't have a sales manager in place. Can you help us systematize? Can you help us develop leadership skills? Can you help us, you know, um, systemize our business? And so we started taking on <clears throat> more projects in that regard, either actually doing implementation or helping to guide. Um, and that spanned several, uh, sorry, seven years, you know, of doing that, uh, being very hands-on in the trenches and, and learning. You know, learning a lot about those industries because I had no exposure prior to 2017, didn't know a lot when I got into it. And so a lot of learning over the years mm -hmm. to then getting, um, you know, a lot of wins under the belt and moving forward to today of basically looking at it's hard to scale that, you know, where you're in hands in the trenches, you know, one company at a time um, or coaching one to one. So mm -hmm. essentially developed a hybrid training slash coaching model, um, put it into our 90 day growth engine program. And primarily it's done in a group format. Um, and so essentially what we've done is reverse engineered 
the success of our clients um, and essentially all the way through from systematization to uh, <clears throat> the front end primarily. We focus more on the front end, so like sales, operations, okay. um, the things related to new business development and growth and putting that into an on-demand format so people can go through at their own time, go through the material where I'm not on like endless one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with clients. Um, go through those materials and then we do meet once a week um, in a group setting. Mm -hmm. But to your point at the beginning of the call, one of the things that we have is everybody's assigned a, an accountability partner um, on our team. So that's a big part of it that we found to be a challenge when operating previously as an agency um, and in the in the consulting model it was like, okay, actually getting the, you know, when, as you said, when the calls are done, said and done, like how does the work actually get implemented? Yeah. So that accountability part has been a big, big, big part of it. Uh, and that's essentially where we sit today. Okay. Well, I think it, you know, it sounds pretty similar to, to myself. It's, it's a matter of you, you find yourself in situations where you're doing things that you didn't expect you would be doing, right? I didn't expect to <laughs> yeah. be a podcaster. I just went looking for it one day and it wasn't there. And I said, well, I can create that. And it's evolved into so many other right. things. But really what I've noticed is that it's, everything I'm doing now is just this culmination of, of what I spent my life doing previously. I've just been kind of able to throw everything into one bag and say, okay, this skill applies here and this skill applies here. And I think a, a lot of people do that. They just may not have as diverse a skill set or they're not interested as in, in many things. Right. And so they just kind of hone in on a couple of things <laughs> and say, this is, this is what I want to do. And, and that's fine. But I think that's all the more reason that we need to get into this, this coaching discussion and, is it something mm -hmm. that people really need? And and I'll throw it out there and I'm going to say, yes, you can't be good at everything. I don't expect you to be. Mm -hmm. I don't expect myself to be. I don't expect Justin to be. I expect us to all have very small skill sets where we excel at certain things and we need help with the rest. And that's okay. I, I learned that oh, I, I don't want to teach myself how to do mud and, and tape work on on drywall i started trying and i said i don't have time on the project i'm on to learn this skill set i'm just going to pay to have it done and that's okay maybe i'll go mm -hmm. teach myself on another one when i don't have like a crunch and i could take more time and develop those hand skills so i'm willing to pay for it and in businesses i think a lot of times there's people that are struggling right they don't understand the operation side they don't understand the sales side you don't understand something right you're really good at, especially with contractors you're really amazing artisans you can produce high quality work and beautiful things and people appreciate what you bring to the table they're willing to pay a premium for it but you struggle with scheduling you struggle with follow up you're struggling to generate new business or get yourself out of the current clientele that you serve and you think you have to do it all on your own I, it's it's been one don't reinvent the wheel it's already been created so go find someone to help you do it and then you don't have to do it alone go hire uh, pay money to save time right and, and i like what oh, are what are your thoughts on all of that justin is that what you're finding as well as it's just kind of like people try and kick the can down the road thinking it's going to get better and they can develop it? Or are you finding that there's yeah. other hangups that they have that get in the way? I mean, I can tell you from my own personal experience on the other side of things, <clears throat> the first time I ever hired a coach mentor, um, it was a big investment. It was my first time. It was uh, a program that I was really intrigued by, you know, because it would solve something that I was looking to solve for that I had no idea how to mm -hmm. do. Um, but I remember talking to him on the call and being like, I'm super excited. I'm going to make this investment and this will be the first and last time I ever do this. Like I was, you know, excited to do it, thinking it would solve, you know, all, all, you know, not all my problems, but a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and he, he checked me right there and was like, I, you know, let me let me stop you right there. This should be the first of many. You know, I am just, you know, but one person that can help mm. you with certain things. Ultimately, I'm the guide, you know, but I but let's make it very clear that I advocate that you continue to invest. You know, this is going to get you there faster. That's creating leverage in your business. Um, and I remember I didn't really take it to heart, like on that call. <laughs> I was like, 
okay, cool. So yeah, yeah, let me get it. Cause I had no idea. I've never mm -hmm. done, never been in a program, never worked with a coach. Um, and, and he was right and I've continued to invest and it's taken like years off of things that would have taken me longer to get yeah. there or never have really had a paradigm shift, paradigm shift and a way of thinking about, you know, certain things. Um, so absolutely. I, I would agree with that. And, and I encounter that when talking to people, you know, in terms of, you know, a lot of times this is unfamiliar, mm -hmm. very, very unfamiliar. I, and, yeah. I mean, I have a, a similar experience as I, I knew. I wanted to get a certain place mentally and physically and and last last year I was like big on on I was walking like 8 miles a day and watching what I ate and all of that and then in I haven't really talked about it too much lately but I, you know I was making videos a lot on that content and stuff and and then when my dad got sick and like kind of fell down the hill mm -hmm. and then the holidays came and it's just all snowballed and so I, I went from 243 down to 200. That was my lowest point. And now I'm back up to like 235. And it's just because I, I gotcha. quit doing the work. And But in that time, I had joined a coaching program that was there for it. And I was I was sold on, on one idea. And I got into the program and I was doing it. And I was going to all the meetings and following the rules and whatnot. And I was just like... I, I, w I was like on board for like a month and then I, I kind of fell out of love with it. And I was sitting there and I was listening to what the guy was saying. I was like, I, just, I find this like really toxic. Like it just didn't sit right with me. And it was actually aggravating to me. And it's like, this is no good. And I reached out and I was like, hey, man, like I, I don't really want to do it anymore. Whatever, you know, like I'm done, <clears throat> but I haven't used it all. Is it like a refund or anything? He was like, nope, no refunds. Da, da, da. And I was like. Uh, whatever like it, it's it's money that I spent because I paid for a whole year in advance but the one thing that I was able to like there was one thing that I took away and I and I haven't mentioned this to too many people and by the time again this comes out at the end of June so when this comes out it'll almost be there and I know I'm not I'm not gonna screw this up um July 1st I will have been sober for a year and so the one thing nice, I took away man. from this was I always knew I was an alcoholic and I knew I had a drinking problem and I could admit it and I knew it caused problems. I just never did anything about it. And for some reason, in one of the calls, the the coach explained it to me and he was like, dude, you're allergic to alcohol. Like you just can't have it in your system. And for some reason, that explanation made sense to me. And I was like, all right, like I'm allergic. I can't have it. And from there, like it's it's stuck. And no matter what I paid, if that's the only thing I got, I didn't spend anything to fix my life. Like that was that was a drop in the bucket with with that piece of information. And so there's so much more I could have taken away and, and maybe have gotten, but I just I wasn't enjoying the environment. It wasn't what I thought, and it was a bad fit. And mm -hmm. that's okay, right? I can go look for another program when I'm ready and I I can better interview people. Like I have I've, I've gained a skill set to kind of work through what I actually want. And I think that's important. Like mm -hmm. if you have a bad experience, you don't, it, it's not necessarily that what you're trying to get is bad. It may just have been a bad fit, a bad coach, a bad program, totally. or you might've tried point. to get something that like <clears throat> your, your coach said, right? This is the first of many. I'm just a step along the way you might have picked somebody that was step three and you need to find somebody that's good for step one to get you ready to take step two and then go to step three right not everybody is totally. for where you're at in your business and i think having that conversation of where to start and how to start and what they're going to help you do is going to go a very long way yeah aligned expectations is really a big part of it for that relationship to work 100 percent Congrats, by the way. Thank um, you. I was pointing to myself because, yeah, that's uh, that first year is um, big. I, I actually have gotten to the point where I've lost track, but um, sometimes I lose track. But I think it's fourteen. Congratulations, fourteen years as sober. Um, but the years before year one were really hard. <laughs> so, yeah. There's there's a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of frustrations. I, I don't necessarily like I try not to regret anything in my life. I think that's a bad way to look at it. Uh, if you I think for me, if you regret something, you get hung up on it and you haven't learned the lesson. 
where so I try not to regret anything. I look at everything as like, all right, what am I taking away from this so I can move forward with it? Totally. totally. Um, and but so it, for I, me yeah. too, it was. Oh, sorry, sorry, man. It was uh, a matter it, of that 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 click for me too. It was like it, until that thing clicked, all the other things just you know uh, mm -hmm. the rationalization oscillating between and the you know the challenge until that thing clicked. It was it felt impossible. Yeah, that that was it, you know, and I'm fortunate that my, my wife wanted to stick around knowing that like, okay, there's something good in Same. there. And like, I, I, I know it's there. I can see it. Yeah, it's just, I, you know, she she waited it out. I'm very fortunate for that. So and I, I know that for yeah. the last year, she's gotten a much better side of me. I'm not I'm not perfect. Um, it, It's not that I can't relapse. I'll be honest, I've wanted like the past two months, I, I've wanted to drink more than the rest of the time. Like the first nine months were like really easy. I don't know. I, I think it's just the stress of working on my, my father's house currently. And it's just getting to me. And I'm just like, yeah, man. oh, man, I could go totally. for a drink. And I haven't done it. And I don't think I'm going to. But it's there. And it's normal. And I and I think it's just kind of working through it. You know, I don't think I have it all together. Could I relapse? Sure. Um, I hope I don't. I don't think I will, it. but yeah, it, shit yeah. happens in life. And, and you just, you know, you'll chalk it up and say, Hey, this is a thing. And you know, one, uh, what is it like when you're, especially when you're on a diet, right? Like just cause you go eat the cheeseburger the one day, doesn't mean you have to throw the entire thing away. Like one bad decision doesn't have to lead to an entire sequence of, of bad decisions in the same way in your business, right? Like one bad coach doesn't have to mean that that whole experience is going to be horrible. No matter what you do, like you can go and find a positive one and, and turn it around. Um, so what are, what do you think people need to look for when they're calling around and, and they're looking for somebody to help them, change their business, right? They realize that they're having a struggle. They don't have the answers. They've, they can truly admit they need the help. They, they don't think they know it all, right? They're in a, they're in the right place to do it, but what do they need to be looking for in the person that they want help from? Yeah, I think we might've already covered some of those items, but if we, if the, together we summarize it, kind of distill it down for people, maybe have a little mini checklist here live. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing is looking at uh, fit for, you know, what stage of business in your, are you in and what are you looking to solve for and get support with um, and making sure that that part is aligned. Like that's number one, right? In terms of like, if somebody's talking about like we do business growth, well, what, what kind, right? And we're sort of, we're very clear with what's in our wheelhouse and what's not in our wheelhouse. And we have this little diagram that's got all the stuff not in our wheelhouse, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so really making sure that that's a fit first, um, wanting to then see a lot of people, you know, want to see proof of those that have gone before them. Yes, of course, that's part of the course in anything that we do. Um, but then next is personality and values, I think is a really important thing. So and vibe, like, do you vibe with that person you're going to be mm -hmm. spending a lot of time with? And we are both in group programs. Um, so generally, if somebody likes your vibe, Kyle, then they would assume that the other people in the group are going to share a similar mentality, personality, and, you know, the values yeah. they bring attitude. Um, and so I think that's a big one. And so we vet for that as well. Um, and interview just as much, if not more, because if we have somebody that comes in, it's not the right culture fit for what we're looking to create it could be disruptive, or their needs are dramatically different, then we'll decline. So I think those three things did I mention three or was I on two? <laughs> but those three things would be um, where I would start. No, I think that's, I think that's a good list. I think you need to look for somebody that can have the, you're right. Someone that you can vibe with someone that has the tools that you're looking for can help guide you through the process. I think, again, I think coaches can get a bad rap of like, Oh, you haven't done it. Like you're not, you're not actively doing it. And teachers haven't always done it. Like some people are better at explaining or, or a lot of the times I think you can have just having that outside perspective and not being in the moment, in the thing, in your business, being removed from it gives you a lot of insights into what needs to happen and just knowing, okay, hey, we have to get these basic building blocks in place for you to even be successful. You talked about, you know, do your values even align with the person? 
and and that's huge I, most small businesses don't have core values even established right yeah. no, no mission no vision no core values i've been huge on this for probably over a year and it's definitely something yep. i work on in the mastermind groups is one of the first things when you when you start up like let's get yeah. these things in place and everyone's like oh that's just corporate business mumbo jumbo it's yeah not. yeah same it's not no. it's it's if you don't know what you stand for why you stand for it and where you want to go how do you accomplish anything, right? And now I'm going to go sign up with, especially as contractors, we're going to go sign up with any restoration company, GC, whatever. We're going to try and build this relationship. They're going to be doing things we don't like, we don't agree with, trying to cut corners, and we're going to get frustrated. And then we wonder why, like, oh my gosh, he offers me so much work, but like every time I just hate doing it. So go find right. someone that like aligns with you and wants to do it the way you want. And, you know, they share the similar mm -hmm. values. And the experience is going to be so much better. It's the same thing. If you're looking for clients, right? Like find the clients that align the, with your, with your values. On the employee side uh, yes. as well. It's such a critical thing um, that gets overlooked. And we, you know, then we wonder why we don't have a players or people that have the potential to become an a player or take ownership of their, you know, uh, scope and role, mm -hmm. you know, it's a poor, poor, poor culture fit, poor values fit, but when it's undefined, how do you know if you're a match? So yeah, we start at the same place as well, and um, and have had to do it in such a way that it's it's not just like like you said, where it's like, oh, this is this is pointless, right? This is all fluff, you know. People sometimes used to doing it when they develop a business plan or sales and marketing yeah. plan. You always start with that part at the top, and it's just like write one sentence and move to the other stuff, right? Yeah. And so don't skim over. It's really it. important to dig. dig it is deep the, on the, that. The, and as you the... said, the. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, just the why you mentioned, right? It's like mm -hmm. we've helped clients uh, grow and they pour gasoline on the fire and you end up looking back and you have a business that you don't like. You built yeah. it and it owns you, but you also don't like it, don't enjoy it. Yes, it's making the money, but um, so yeah, having that having that set out at the beginning is super important. For sure. I, I, that, the why is, is a big reason and I think a lot of people get hung up and they're trying to find the why and they're like, I want to grow and I want to have a big company in my area and I want 10% of the market share. That's cool. That can be your why, but it doesn't have to be your why, right? The the thing I say, the one I use as an example all the time is like, I don't care if your why is that, you know, I got a, I know a guy, him and his wife work like six months out of the year, super hard. And then they'll go do a mission trip and they take off, they shut mm -hmm. shop, shut down shop. They let all the contractors they work with know like, Hey, we're out of here for like three months and they're somewhere off in Africa or somewhere else. And, and they do a mission trip Wow. and like That's that cool. they, their why is to be able to go give back somewhere else, right? And totally. so it has nothing to do with the tile they install and now they're doing some GC stuff, but like the the why is this whole other thing, right? So if you wanna provide like water wells of, of clean drinking water to really underprivileged communities mm -hmm. in, in Africa somewhere, or you wanna find a way to go on a missions trip, or you wanna find a way to support the local charity kids theater in your area. Like, I don't care what your why is. It could be that you just want to free up more time to spend with your young family. If that's your yep. why. And then like that applies to your employees, right? So now when you go recruiting, having those values, I think is super important because then people can come on board and be like, oh, look, they value this. Like they're going to want me to have the same thing. Or I really like that. If, if I want to build a family in the future, I want to have that same thing. They can get aligned. And everyone's going to get along much better, especially if you truly stick to it. And that's what you're really trying to do. And so find, yeah, values are, I think we take them for granted and we just assume, and it's, it, it definitely needs to be looked into way more. Totally. Yeah. We have an exercise we have people go through and then we've got this once identify the core values, <clears throat> got this thing where it's like the walk, the walk now, because it's one mm -hmm. thing to draft them out and they sit on a piece of paper or a digital notepad go into the drawer, collect dust, nothing ever happens with them. So walk the walk and, and, you know, on a weekly basis, pick one aspect you're walking the walk in, how you're showing up, you know, uh, doing mm -hmm. an install and you're going to show up and embody that value. Um, so yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. And also I... the why when, when going gets, when shit hits the fan or things get tough, which they inevitably do, right. Oh, on yeah. the entrepreneurial journey, you know, being grounded in that, in that why, right. That's your anchor you know, helps you get, get through it where you don't throw up your hands and say, I want to sell the business and go get a job. Right. 
because you can come back to that that anchor well that it gives you the direction too right like if, if you're working with people and they're not helping you figure these things out then it's probably not a good fit but like you, you need to have the why so that you can come back to it i, I know i did an interview a while back with someone that I, I forget her name um she's really good at like systemizing stuff and her and her husband built up this company and and they grew it and they had all these employees all of a sudden and she was like i hate it i i despise going to work this they, they shuttered the thing they they like shut it all down they they re-looked at what they were passionate about went to do that and then they got they fired the employees but they set those employees up with the clients that they had and they said look you're just going to work directly with with them now like off you off you go have have this thing right and they they went back to what they wanted to really do and looked at it and i was like that's amazing to know i think a lot of times people are scared to downsize but if it's if you've built the wrong thing Yep. yep. The, why? The, just, no wonder uh, you're frustrated. Stop. That's what I just went through. This transformation for ourselves as well was ending up on the other side of building a business. I realized, how did I get here? What did I do? You know, mm -hmm. and this, yeah, very similar um, in terms of not finding fulfillment in it. So that's something we focus on heavily is, you know, building a business by design, not by default. And one that, you know, ultimately is connected to your long term happiness. Right. Yeah. Well, I think one of the I, actually we'll get into it in a second. I need to interrupt this. So I need to get this uh, ad from John's Manville in, but then we'll we'll get into talking about how I think just expressing yourself and and having a place mm. to go do that with people that understand you is is super big. So uh, let's see. Quick word: the rumors are true. GoBoard Pro is available and approved for steam showers. GoBoard Pro was developed with the Pro Contractors Ease of Project workflow in mind. Panel size at 48 by 64 inches will limit waste on your project, meaning less sealant is needed. And best of all, you can space those beautiful blue go board fasteners out to 12 inches apart without requiring washers. Visit www.jm.com slash go board to learn more and find out about their other products and their warranty. Okay, Justin, uh, we are, let's see. So just expressing yourself. I think a lot of people, as, as entrepreneurs, we get inside our own head. And I don't know that enough people recognize the value of what a coaching or like accountability program will do for them. We, we are so stuck inside. It's my business. I have to solve it. I got to figure it out. And, and we process a lot of stuff internally. And so one of the core values I came up with for Floor Academy is actually, I, I call it self-externalization. And it's just about spewing your internal crap out. And, and the reason being is that you process it differently. I don't care if it's that you journal it. I don't care if it's that you get on a weekly call and you talk about it with somebody else, you call a friend. But there's something about getting other business owners that are all kind of going through the same stuff together and, and saying it out loud that really breaks you down and allows you to open up and move forward. And it's not the same as going and talking to your spouse, folks. It's not the same as talking to your friend that, you know, is is your buddy and you fish with them once a week but he's got a nine to five and, and you're running a business like they just don't they don't get it like you need people that have been there done that and it doesn't necessarily have to be your space i'm sure i could go sit down with a you know business owner of a some kind of like shipping company shop right like one of the the mailbox places and and have an amazing conversation about struggles with employees and, and overhead and, and all of it but like They've been there, they've done that, they've experienced it. But just getting it out loud outside of yourself, you you think about it differently, you process it differently. And a lot of times you come to your own conclusion before you get any advice from other people. And then they just kind of back it up. But if you would have just kept it internal, man, you'd have kept coming to the same conclusion that had you stuck forever. And so I don't know that enough people mm -hmm. look at what value that actually brings. So what have, what have you found along those lines? Yeah, that's something we get a lot of that feedback in terms of, you know, we offer a lot through our program, um, a lot of turnkey solutions, but 
what has consistently come up, as I'm sure it does for you as well, um, in your mastermind is the group, right? They're like, if, if nothing else, I would be here for this, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, being in the room with the guys, um, they referred to it as a, right now it is all just a group of guys. I'm sure that will change over time, you know, and we'll have a different dynamic in there, hopefully with, uh, um, women coming into the group and, and expanding that out as well. Mm-hmm. Right now it is, and they kind of refer to it as a brotherhood, you know, right now. Um, and they find that that to be has been the most um, a breath of fresh air, right? It's uh, I think a couple of guys have said that's breath of fresh air. And even though we we should, you know in, instinctively know that other people are going through the same thing, having it, witnessing it, being part of it, um, they've said you know it's gone from being a very lonely place on that entrepreneurial yeah. journey to feel like it's not to feel like you're supported to feel as though you're you've sworn on the podcast already right so we're uncensored here a little bit or uh, sorry go ahead i i, I missed oh it. oh i was just saying i think you've you've swore a little on the podcast oh already. yeah you okay know, you know occasionally we, we try not to go too hard but you know if it comes out it comes out <laughs> um yeah i was just gonna say how can else like i said but just um not feeling like you're, I'll switch it, not feeling like you're, uh, you're failing, like you are the only one that's not getting this right, you know, and for some reason, you're the one that's uh, dropping these balls or, or can't get something right. So, yeah, that's been something that people have really communicated that's been a breath of fresh air. It's helped to reignite, you know, their uh, energy, motivation in their mm-hmm. business. Um, in terms of what you were talking about, of vocalizing, getting things out, whether you journalize a journal, share it with somebody else. I think part of that in a program creates a very like consistent cadence to have that because when you have a ton of oversight in a business, you know, you're juggling so many things, putting out so many fires, million things going on in your head Mm -hmm. that the need to like come to a full stop and be able to be, you know, have a practice of being self-aware is helpful. Like I think a lot of the people we work with are already self-aware but it just increases the frequency of doing yeah. that, especially in times where, you know, there's so much going on, you know, um, it's harder to, to do that. You kind of just hurt along. And before you know it, you haven't really taken time to pause and, and reflect, you, you know, know it, and then um, yeah. express that stuff. It's funny. It's one of the reasons why here I'll, I'll pull it up. If you're watching the video folks, uh, it's one of the reasons why I switched to having a piece of swag that's a notebook. Everyone who gives out T-shirts in this in this industry, and or you know, if you're if you're doing tile, you might end up with a duck to flood test with or stuff. And I love all of it. Okay, don't get me wrong, but I was looking for like what's different, what fits my business model. Yeah, and printing a, a notebook was was it right? So the the clients all get one when they join a mastermind group. I'll ship you out a notebook, and if you you catch me in <laughs> Vegas or if I'm at one of the other events, I usually have some left from from that and. I'll hand them out too, but it's now you have a place to journal, right? Especially if you're in the mastermind group, you come to the meeting, you should be taking notes. You should be writing your goals down. You should be writing what you worked on, writing down feedback that you like that other people are getting. It gives you a place to keep track of it all, right? Then you can show up to the meeting every week and, and you have it. You can look at it during the week as you carry it around and make progress notes, whatever you need to do. But it's like, that's your tool to to do it and actually get it accomplished. And I think it helps a lot of people. That's awesome. You know, a lot of, I I know that a lot of them are using them. And then the other thing I'd add is you mentioned that you have, um, like a brotherhood going on right now. And that's, it's great, right? I, I know that there's a special place for that. And I've had one of my, at one, I've always had women in my groups. I've always been very fortunate that like every group always ends up with one women, one woman, yeah. Um, and I had a group that lost one for a while before I got acquired a, a, another one and, and was able to ch- kind of change the group around. But when it was a brotherhood, it was a totally different feel. And Dynamic, I, yeah. I think it was actually for the worse, to be honest. Like mm-hmm. they, they, It's not that they weren't accomplishing stuff, but it quickly devolves into it, – it's very macho and it's it, it's not like – competitive but it just i think what i have found that the women generally add is they just they come Mm -hmm. in with that softer touch and so everyone's in there and they're they're sharing advice and and whatnot and i think one of the comments one time was somebody was struggling with a, a female employee that um 
they were looking at like we've never had to do maternity leave like we don't know how to do it we got to figure it mm. out and then the um sadly the the woman had had uh, had a miscarriage and and lost the baby mm. and it was early on but still it, it sucks my wife has had one herself and yeah. you know it's super hard Same. and and yeah. the the woman in the group came along and she was like did you send her flowers Right. And it's just like, it was like, oh my God, like I didn't even think about it. And as men, I don't blame us. Right. Like that's not high on our priority list. It's it's not our wife or significant other. Like we're, we're not necessarily there, but it was like, oh yes, this is a human being. I can show that I care. Like, let me get some ordered. I can get the, everybody at the company to sign the card. It can be from us. Mm -hmm. And it's things like that where it's all of a sudden just this softer side comes out and it's like, Hey, you can be all about production and and profitability all you want, but are you remembering to care for people? <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, there's yeah. a whole other side here. Um, yeah. And I, I, think I think that's a big thing is like, look <clears throat> at who's in the group, right? Really ask and like, if you're joining a program, who's in it? Who am I going to be around? Can I can I talk with them? Totally. Yeah, yeah. I, I that's interesting to hear. I think I've, I've been um, it's been interesting that the groups that, that we have going of the energy the dynamic is um one that is i don't know what the right word is but it feels like we have a very good balanced dynamic and energy i mean myself personally not having come through the trades you know i think i bring a different dynamic immediately Mm -hmm. as sort of the facilitator yeah you know of that um and also what the core values of the program is when we vet um yeah we we get into uh, people are very open uh get into emotions uh you know their feelings you know early on um very supportive very um sort of holistic yeah approach to yeah to both how we tackle the business but also what people are, are focused on um so it, it's been nice I, I do look forward to when we expand that um but um just hearing you share that other side uh, gets me to reflect on, on what yeah, I mean, I can't. Rec- I would, I would go push hard to like try and find a, a lady or two to get in there. It's just, a, it's. I, I find it amazing yeah. what they bring up. I'm just like, oh, for sure. Didn't even think of that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, that's that's worth the cost of admission for the next two months, right there. <laughs> just changing that like little thing, right? It's it's always funny what they what they'll bring up and and point out, and you're just like, oh yeah, that's so good. Um, the that's other cool. thing you said is that people are. It's it's awesome to see people open up and I, I, I forget what, uh, what Ben Stiller movie it is. Right. But he, it's, it's like, we're in the trust tree and it's okay. And you can talk about anything. And like, that's, that's really what has to develop. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Ben Stiller. What was the circle of trust or something? Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Meet the Fockers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yes. It's that one. Right. And then the, the father-in-law is just like throwing it out the window oh, yeah. and messing with it. It's so funny. But it, that's really what those environments have to be like, is you need to be able to come in and, and feel comfortable to really open up about everything. Like if, if you want to discuss yeah. the numbers and dig into what's holding you back, oftentimes it's really not a problem of you being able to implement a system. It really comes down to you've got your own like emotional baggage in the way that's stopping you from doing it. Your own disbeliefs get in your way. And yep. so if you're yep. not willing to throw it all on the table totally. in front of a couple of people that you, you are getting to know, it, it's not going to work. Yep. And and that's the scary yep. part is there's some admissions that, that happen. And, you know, if it gets deep. Totally. Yeah, it gets deep. Uh, the vulnerability, absolutely. Um, and being willing to do that. So we have that as part of like in, in the vetting process. If they're, if they're, you know, on board to do that, we know that that'll help them be successful. And it's mm-hmm. uh, those that are there to serve, serve others um, in the group, in their community. Um, but when they do that, they're there to serve because it's going to help others as well in the in the program. So everybody signs on knowing that at the beginning. Yeah, no, I think that's big. Is you have to be, you have to be open to receive as as well as as give, and you can't you can't just take take take. And and the way I've always kind of explained it is the my mastermind groups end up kind of mixed, and you know there might be a two, three, four, five million dollar business with somebody that's only doing three hundred thousand. And and I've had people ask me like, well, yeah, but what am I going to get out of 
the the little guy. And I'm like, well, a lot of times they need more out of you. And and I know that where you're at, like if if you're being a part of it and you're and you're that big, you're probably willing to give back and mentor people, which is great. But I think a lot of times the larger business forgets what it's like to be scrappy. And having that perspective come at them of like, hey, did you think about it this way? Oh, no, like I, I didn't. And I forgot about that. And I can do that. And we can actually make that change. And, and I get it. The, I, I guess the way I explain business is a lot is like when you're the owner operator, it's like you're in a kayak on a, on a very small recreational pond. Right. Or maybe you're just kind of in um, like think of like some farmer that has like a private bass fishing pond on his yard. Right. It's like an acre. Right. You can get in there with the kayak. And if you decide you want to turn a 180, man, you just dip that pole in the water and you spin it and your paddles turn you 180 in, in a couple of seconds. But yeah, you start getting up into that three, four, $5 million mark and you've got a 120 foot yacht, 120 foot yachts do not turn on a dime. They're not, they're not supposed to. And it, it's hard. There's a bunch of employees in the way there's rules, regulations, policies, all everything. Right. So it takes longer to kind of get this thing to turn, but there are things that you can do where you're like, Oh wait, I can go make that change and I can put it in place fairly quickly. And, and I forgot that it doesn't have to be hard. Right. And then if you continue to grow and you want to look at like a fortune 500 company with thousands of employees, well, then you've got an ocean liner and good God, they'll turn around, but it might take a minute and it might take some help. You know, you might have to get a tugboat out there to start pushing on there, a couple of them to push on the sides and spin it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. It, it, that's why they <laughs> I guess you could, you know, you look at like a movie like Office Space. Right. And Bob and Bob come in and they're downsizing and they're the consultants and they're oh, interviewing yeah. people on like, hey, what do you do around here? And are you actually useful? And look at that. Through all their hard work, they found a payroll error to where somebody was fired, but continuing to get money. Like You might need some external help every once in a while. There's nothing wrong with you needing help and paying for it like what is it leveraging you on the other side and how are you getting there it, yeah, like, totally. how how are you finding your clients to to get the best kind of returns right like where, <clears throat> where are you finding that they find most of the value is it is it truly in the systems and processes you're implementing or is it just in like coming and and knowing that there's other people like i i i it's not that the systems and processes don't help, but I think more people find the the benefit in the actual like communication with others. Yeah, totally. That's something, you know, I've always heard about. And then now, you know, getting to witness it and experience the nothing short of magic, you know, in, in those in my groups and in those moments. Um, but I would say it is it is fairly balanced because we are heavy on um you know, we start with exactly as you said, it's like, you know, figuring out what that core vision, core mm -hmm. values are, mapping a strategic game plan, and then essentially helping them to execute against it. Um, so the systematization of new business development and sales all the way through to making sure when you ramp things up that you've got scalable operations. So we're very much, you know, looking to drive tangible results through, you know, proven mm -hmm. playbook to get there. And and then I think the other thing becomes like that, you know, it's the icing on the cake and that pleasant surprise that they weren't necessarily um, expecting, you know, to have when they yeah. get into the group. And, and I think that the, the bonds, the relationships, the support, the camaraderie, um, you know, that's something that that then is a, it's hard to measure that ROI, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely people come into the group because they want a very measurable ROI through working with us. But that other part's a little harder to measure. Yeah. But I, I think... Um, from the feedback we've gotten it i'm not sure if it outweighs the other side but i definitely say it's equal equal to if not great you know at, yeah. at least equal to i, I sure. think that uh the roi side can get difficult right a, a lot of times people are coming in and they they want the help and they're like oh well, i gotta build this i gotta build that i gotta find a way to up my sales and and then you you're you're working with them and this comes back to like what do you need to do when you're in the program and, and you got to do the work it, it, you know i mm -hmm. I think a lot of people start trying to implement the stuff, but then they don't implement anything to track it. And then they're like, it didn't work. We well, don't know yeah, if it worked or yeah, not. Absolutely. You didn't do anything to track it, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't find a way to look at how you change the sales. You didn't do anything to find out if you're actually by changing wages are 
you know, I, I've seen posts lately about, you know, hey, my guy wants a raise. I don't know if I can justify it. Mm -hmm. You got to get some job costing going, right? And the only you can't just hand out money, right? It's uh, pay is based on on revenue generated, unless it's you know an internal employee, and even then, it's based on revenue generated times saved. Like you have to find a way to track someone's usefulness to you, and if you're not out there doing that work, then of course it didn't it, it didn't work because you don't have any results to actually show. And I, it, there's, I think a lot of times people come in and they just expect this magic fix and everything's going to get better. And that's not the case. Like you, you're the biggest reason to pay money for a program is that you feel like an idiot when you don't go do the actual work because now you've bought right. it. In. it <clears throat> the, the, you have to have some skin in the game. And it's, it's one of the things, like I've said, like you can find plenty of successful entrepreneurs to mentor you. All you have to do is ask. Everybody's willing to share advice. But the thing is, is that if you don't show results, they're going to cut you off really, really quick because their time's too valuable to invest in somebody that's not going to do the work. And so... Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, you don't have to pay for coaching programs. You can find it for free. But that accountability that comes with spending some of your own hard earned money on it. You're probably going to go do the work because you, you feel really, really stupid when you don't. Yeah, the skin in the game part is 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 a big one. Like the programs that I've invested in, does that ever get me fired up to get things done? Because I'm putting uh, a large investment on that and there's a time frame in which it needs to get done. Um, but that is one of the biggest challenges and hurdles in in what we do and what we've tried to, you know, solve for. Mm -hmm. So just the years and specifically, you know, in working with contractors and working with, um, you know, surface pros, there's, as you said, owner operated in many cases, it is very challenging, right? There's so much oversight, so many things, so little time, um, wearing too many hats, putting up fires. So that is one of the things that we looked to design our model around. So like in terms of how can we remove as many of those constraints as mm -hmm. possible? And you have to get creative with how we do that. So, um, you know, having an accountability partner is part of it. Um, the group keeping up each other accountable is a good mechanism. Um, you know, it's one thing for it to come from us, but when it comes from a peer of that person saying, hey, did yes. you get such and such done? They text each other. It's helpful. It definitely is. Um, we do different things and different challenges. We also have implementation sessions. So like we're having one tomorrow at nine, um, the group comes, everybody knows what they're coming with 90 minutes on the clock. We do three 30 minute sprints ultimately to get it done. And that's not okay. all the time. We do one a month mm -hmm. because ultimately if there's some stuff that's starting to slide, we come in and they've got non-negotiable time. They put the blinders on, get it done with our support and we're there. That helps as well. Yeah. Um, and then the that's thing huge. that we found to be kind of the, when I was designing this, like kind of, you know, me, you know, really going in, what would the ideal outcome be if I was on the other side? And also asking, you know, our previous uh, clients that we were doing group coaching with and one-on-one -on -one is when we did the on-demand, so it's like, it's all there. The constraint is like the owner operator is the biggest constraint. So many of the playbooks and the modules are made for somebody like a front desk admin they can go through it and they execute it. You mm -hmm. know, if you've got a, a key salesperson in place and we're looking to put in certain um, processes in for auditing the CRM, for example, they can take the module, go through it, implement it, and we also help to keep them accountable, right? So yeah. we're really looking to amplify the, the owner's uh, capabilities bandwidth through their team. So otherwise, it'll be a long road to get there. You know, yes. It's just week after week, did you get that item done? Um, that's one of the things we learned would be almost like a non-starter. So we've got yeah. some interesting mechanisms in place to overcome those barriers. Because as they grow, if our job's to help them grow, then there's going to be those thresholds and those complexity ceilings, and which they just can't you know, mm -hmm. do any more work in the program. So we've designed it to overcome those things as best as possible. You know, no, I like it. You definitely, if, if you've got a bigger team, you have to find a way to leverage that team to start doing yeah. some stuff for you. That's the point. You can't do it all. You have, you've hired people for a reason. Now go trust them. If you can't mm -hmm. trust people, you're never going to grow. You're going to be stuck. You're going to yeah. be miserable. Oh, nobody does it as well as me. 
there's probably people that totally. do it better than you, right? It It's mm -hmm. just the way it is. You're not the greatest in the world. Yeah. Someone's going to be better. So let them go do it and go do mm -hmm. what you need to do. Um, what do you say to people that are like, I can't afford it? How do you overcome that objection? Because yeah, for, for me, it's how can you afford, if you're truly struggling, how can you afford not mm -hmm. to get the help to get to the next level, let alone, again, coming back to that pain point of, it's probably a good thing if it's a struggle and, and puts you in an uncomfortable place because growth doesn't come from being comfortable. Yeah, that's true. So we, we actually don't get that too often, um, surprisingly. And, and then the price point is, I guess you would say, high ticket or at a premium you mm -hmm. know, to work with us because of there's so many aspects of it you know, that, that we're providing. Um, so it doesn't come up that much because the value exchange, well, um, we're very clear on what the value exchange is. And I think when, when we do a good job of communicating that, then it's not price in a vacuum of just like, oh, it's too expensive, can't afford it because there's not an understanding of what the value will be and what the, uh, uh, what the return should be. Mm -hmm. you know, if the right steps are taken. And it's usually actually seen as this is a, a solid investment. Yes, it definitely will be something where it's like, okay, we, we're going to have to allocate. We're going to have to make sure that, you know, we're going to do the work to get the return on this. And yeah. and I think what actually comes out is a serious commitment you know, being like, okay, this is not insignificant. So I'm going to make sure like I'm all in, I'm dialed in, I'm going to show up, uh, I'm going to do the work um, and I'm going to make sure I get a return on the investment. And then for those that, where that has come up, um, you know, I think I, I heard you starting to say, it's like, can you afford not to do it? Right. Yeah. And I think for us, I, I've not necessarily said that, but I think, you know, I, I kind of go back to what were we looking to accomplish? You know, what, what are the, the challenges mm -hmm. um, that they've encountered? What have they done before? Is this really a good fit? You know, ultimately having them be able to self-identify, is this a good fit? Um, and what I try to do is we should be able to get a measurable ROI. So I, I do look to paint that picture. Um, and mm -hmm. what we try to do is have a 10 X, a 10 X return on investment from what they're putting in is what they should get out. Um, and that generally has people feeling fairly comfortable in making yeah. that investment, you know, and those that can't afford it because, you know, they've got the calendars, got too much white space <laughs> scheduled light. And uh, they've got to fill capacity and they haven't been able to make payroll. In those situations, it might, it's likely not the right fit under that much pressure for mm -hmm. this to work. Um, and so in those cases, I would agree. Like this is, it's too high pressure situation um, and likely would not set either of us up for success if that's where you're at. I, I think there's definitely situations, but I think a lot of times people are just unwilling to get uncomfortable is what mm -hmm. it comes down to, right? It's, no, I can figure it out on my own. And and I was that way for a long time. I, I will admit that the, like I am very good at looking at other companies and helping them figure out ideal clients and, and figuring out their messaging and, and all of that. And for the longest yeah. time, because I'm, I'm fairly decent at it, I feel. I was like, okay, I know Floor Academy. I can get this figured out, da, da, da. It wasn't moving the needle. It wasn't doing a thing for me. And I and I couldn't figure it out. And I sat down and I... And I worked with someone that specializes in figuring, figuring out messaging. And I feel much more confident in the product I put out, how I pitch things, how it's going to, the websites in development, mm -hmm. but the new website is way different with the way things are, are explained and whatnot. And it's because right. I had to get removed. Like it, it's very, it was oh. very hard for me to do my own thing. And so having that other person and being able to sit down and really explain, like, this is why I'm passionate. This is what I want. Like, she was able to put it in such mm -hmm. a better place for me to explain it than I was myself. Mm -hmm. And it, it's been worth every penny. And I, and I feel great about that for investment. Sure. But it wasn't one that I probably fought it for like two years thinking, oh, I got this. I can do it. And it was just I should have done it two years ago. And just pulled the trigger and spent oh, the right. money, but it was—it's kind of one of those mm -hmm. things. And the longer I'm, I'm doing this, and the more I've moved throughout and whatnot, it, I say the same thing about my contracting business. If I were to go back to contracting, I would—I would drop ten percent of all revenue back into advertising 
no questions asked. Mm -hmm. And I never, I I spent like nothing on advertising previously. I was all word of mouth and built it through free Facebook advertising and whatnot. And then I looked back Mm -hmm. onto like, well, yeah, I was able to keep myself busy, but I was never going to be able to keep multiple crews busy. And I was like, that 10% in advertising spend would have gotten me a lot more Mm -hmm. phone calls to price things. I could have priced more jobs at a higher rate and probably turned a higher margin but I also probably could have landed more projects, which would have forced me to hire and get me off of the floor and manage a bunch of stuff instead of I only have enough stuff to keep myself and maybe one other person busy. And then I was caught up. Mm -hmm. And so I think when you're, when you're looking at these things, right, you need to, it's okay to admit you don't have all the answers and you don't have to, there's people to help you figure it out. Yeah, totally. Totally, uh, totally. All right, Justin. Uh, anything we didn't hit on that you think is of importance that we need to mention? Not necessarily. You know, we came in with the loose framework. I think I think with the the topic of it, you know, coaching versus cheerleading. Did we dig into that like deep enough in terms I, of I you know, maybe not. I, I look if someone's out there just like making you feel good, but they're not providing you with anything to actually move forward. Is it? Is it really? Is that what you need? Is that what you're paying for? If you need a cheerleader, mm-hmm. hey, man, go for it. I'm not saying a cheerleader is a bad thing, mm-hmm. but I think yeah, a lot of people need, need the tools us in our corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that that's what. I, what do you What do you have to add on that? If if anything. Yeah, I just. I mean, that was an interesting. An interesting. Uh, uh, title that you, you put on it. Um, and then I think we dug into a lot of things. I think that, um, yeah, coaching is an interesting space, right? Because it's like, you can get it like therapy, right? <laughs> if, you've, mm-hmm. if you've invested in therapy, you know, which, which I have over the years and have had mixed experiences of, you know, being there mm-hmm. and having them ask, well, what do you think? You know, what do you think you should do? Or sounds like you're doing great with that. I'm like, <laughs> now I need some answers, man. This is this is a this is a time, you know, especially when I was younger. This mm-hmm. is a time I, I need some answers. I'm here for um, somebody to tell me what I need to do. Um, and so I think there is a deeper, even layer in that of finding the right personality and style that you're looking for. Um, it is good yeah. to have people lift you up. It is good to have people in your corner. That's one of the things that we kind of use that language with their clients is they knowing that we've got their back and that we're in their corner, I think helps them feel a little bit more secure. Like you've got somebody Mm -hmm. not just, we're not just rooting for you because that's different. That would be the cheerleader. Like we're in your corner to see that you succeed, right? And our brand driven for growth, our tagline is we are relentless. Yeah. It's to have a relentless nature to succeed. And we want to ensure that when times get tough, that we're able to be there and support them, that they can continue to have that relentless nature. Um, Because it's not something that is, that people can perpetually have, right? There are seasons where you can get in there, you know, get it done. There's times where it's a lot harder. And so having somebody in your corner, that has got your back, you know, is helpful. But I think that um, personality style, if you're looking for somebody that when you show up, they're gonna, they're gonna let you know, no, that's, you will want to replace that person. They're not just gonna kind of go, well, what do you think? Uh, You know, let's just see how that goes, right? So like Mm -hmm. really be able to make things, I think, a lot of the feedback we get is they've gotten clarity and confidence. So try to make things as binary for people as possible, right? That we're not here to kind of just, you know, have that style of things where it's like, well, what do you think? And what do you think would be the right thing? And it's great to have other people chime in the group, but ultimately I think a lot of people are looking for, you know, um, us to help them expedite things, Mm -hmm. right? Whether Mm -hmm. it's a decision-making process or leveraging a proven strategy or playbook, so I think that, um, yeah, if you're looking for a coach, a mentor, or a program to make a little bit of a checklist before you go into it, of what you're looking for, um, and it even goes deeper than beyond just the cheerleader in coaching, there's different styles. Yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah. Really figure so, yeah, out what you're looking I, sure. Yeah, I, th- I think that's what it kind of comes down to is figure out what you want, right? Are you looking to just grow a process? Are you looking to change something about you? Like, and then find the program that that fits that go talk to people that are doing it and Mm -hmm. get their feedback on what they think of the program and and how it's helping them and what it's done and ask the questions right you're gonna have to get vulnerable before you actually get 
vulnerable with with other people in, in a in a coaching program that you get involved in and if you're not willing to put it all on the table then i don't know what to tell you it, it's it, <laughs> you you gotta definitely be willing to put it all out there and mm-hmm. uh that's that's the big part of it justin if people want to find you where can they where can they do so uh yeah easiest place would be my website or our website um justin x shaw.com justin shaw was taken so we put the letter x in there um because it's the multiplier for growth and also we help people to solve for the unknown so x represents you know the unknown um so yeah justin x shaw.com you can learn about what we do and um, we got a free training on there so people could you know jump in and, and watch that love it all right that's going to do it for us this week folks don't forget to check out floracademypod.com check out the shop you can pick up some swag over there if you want a hat a shirt a hoodie it's a little warm right now but it'll get cold again and then you can get that awesome profit is not a dirty word hoodie notebook uh notebooks are not on there although i could probably look at the drop shipping site and and get a notebook (laughs) um if you want a notebook, you can join a mastermind group. I've got a couple openings, so uh, we can get you a notebook that way. Otherwise, uh, come January, I expect that I'll be back at Surfaces, and I'll probably have a you know bundle of notebooks with me, and uh, nice. you yeah, can you awesome. can end up with one at the show. Uh, let's see. If you want to help support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash floor Academy. Even $5 a month goes a long way in helping me to continue doing what I'm doing over here. Don't forget to like subscribe, leave a review. It helps put the, not only is it going to get you other content like this from other creators that you'll enjoy and help move your business forward, but it helps grow the show and the community. And so if you want to be able to continue to get more and more out of what we're doing here, then continued growth is the way is is one way to help get that right. We're going to add more people to the community that will have new viewpoints and insights, and we can all benefit from that. So reviews are super big. I'll have to go and look and check if we have any new ones and I'll, I'll read them on air live. Like I have in the past. Do I have anything else? Uh, We got a quick word from Tice. Stay connected, continue discovering, learn more, and network. Now available, you will want to access the International Surface Events new resource library. Flip through the digital pages of the Tice resource books to source products, take tailored journeys through Tice event offerings, or watch, rewind, and share Tice recorded content from the event. Available now at intlsurfaceevent.com or click the link in the show notes. You'll even see this podcast featured inside the TICE 2024 textbook, offering select recordings from this year's amazing event in Las Vegas. Don't forget to check the dates for next year in January. Get them on your calendar. Book your tickets. Book your hotel room. Pay for it now. I know you're going to wait until like the end of November, early (laughs) December, if not like beginning of January. And the rooms only continue to get more expensive. You'll also end up taking a project that comes along at the last minute and not go and get the benefits of attending a show. Attending these shows is exactly the same as coaching. You should be going with an idea of how do I 5x, 10x this investment of going and who am I going to meet? And what things do I want to change about my business while I'm there? And Tice has been excellent for me and others that I know to be able to get a little something to boost us up each and every year. All right, folks, that'll do it for us. We will catch you next week. Justin, thanks again for joining us and providing your insights. Awesome, my man. It's great to spend time with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Go learn while you earn, folks.